well sorry it's been a while since last Grand Ola build, it's been quite awkward trying to get this build done to be honest with you. But I've got myself space sorted where I can just constantly work and build now with no problems. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the whole Grand Ola built in one, in just one sitting today. And then I'm going to cut it up and edit it all into different sections. Now from last time we left off, we left off at the gearbox. So we will be uh, completing the gearbox today, as I said in the last episode, which were quite a while back now. So again, I am really sorry for that. I am putting a lot of changes in for my YouTube channel as well for the new year, for 2018. Because I'm always out with the trail cars, and I'm always out in the woods or wherever, up quarries, I'm always out trailing. Um, it's because they go anywhere RCs and I love them, <laughs> I really do, it's a great hobby and this channel's become more truck based which I'd like to start introducing more of what I actually do in the RC world because the trucks, I can build them up which it's not going to stop, the truck builds and everything else is going to continue as normal but I just want to introduce more of RC trucking basically and just broaden its horizons as a lot of you guys who are actually into the 114 trucks maybe into the 110th crawling trail stuff as well so I just want to try and fill that gap and I can share what I actually enjoy in the hobby then so for now with the Grand Ola as I said it will be a um, Constructing the gearbox from part 20, and if I remember, this is quite a way through. Yeah, <laughs> so I've got all the bits out I need for this laid on the table as I do. And uh, when I did the original unbox video to this, I had um, a crawler motor to go in. Well, I blew one of my motors in the crawlers, so I will be working with the original 27 to Tamiya can that comes in the kits which is no problem because then I can just do another video on when I change the motor on how to replace them because some of you might buy a ready to run vehicle and be curious just to, to know how to do that anyway so enough babbling I'm sure you just want to see building and get this build done because I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for me to continue with yours so again I do apologise for that right there's the chassis some years may have progressed got an idea and just moved on and just cracked on and got it done uh, but that's pretty much where it's at now so we've got the rest of the bits which will be used for the gearbox out all the gears, all the plastic parts and these bits particularly for the first step of course the instructions and a mug of coffee so for this step we'll be needing like forks shift rod these are to hold the motor casing together and stuff and you need a few little screws some e-clips, a couple of washers little nuts and bolts and of plastic parts so you're going to want to take this little tiny rod and make sure you have it the correct way around and just build it up as it shows in the manual now some of you with these forks if you look closely some of them are numbered on the back of that one it's number two I don't know if you can focus in there but in the back of that it says number two and in the back of that one in here it says number one so if you're reading these numbers ignore them don't let it put you off don't let it confuse you it means nothing as in regards to the build this. and the fork a spring and a washer and we'll pop two more e-clips on these two 
now you have a fork. Remember, I constantly go in the opposite way. One's facing forwards, second facing backwards, the other facing forwards. And you want the other spring, washer, your gearbox, motor plate, the rods, like little link rods. So I said, remember, I've that the right way around. And your little piece of plastic, like a little wash thing, that's going to pop on the inside where the two holes are. And we're just going to nut and bolt that into there. So all the nuts, they just sit inside the little piece of plastic. It's already set out for the nuts to sit in. And there's a tiny little screws, screwdriver. I must say the weather isn't really the best out there, is it? I've been dying to just get my trucks out to run them, but the, the weather just never allows. With all the electronics and lights and sound and everything else in there, they're not really something I just want to take out to run to make videos with willy-nilly. But I'm sure as the weather becomes nice in the new year, come April, May, that's usually when we see sunshine these days, uh, I can get the trucks out give them a run. So, now you've made your shift fork and part constructed your motor housing, gearbox housing. Step 20 and that's done. So now step 21. Now these two gear rods they are different. So as stated in previous episodes, I'm just using the manual for reference if you're unsure on which is which. And just carefully after compare these to the ones that you're looking at in the manual because it doesn't particularly tell you which ones you're using other than how many teeth unless you're much patterned in their own unique way anyway so it's not that much of rocket science but there is a little bit of rocket science in there I'd say especially if you don't know and if you don't know then it can be hard work but that's hopefully what I'm here for and that's to help you guys get through it so, so for the first phase gears you will be using look like this you want to take your gear this one and make sure you got this the correct way around with the longer teeth to the end where the gear is going to sit on and that will sit over there and then we're just going to lock that in place with one of these and then make sure you got your gear the right way around if you look the teeth are going to sit inside there so slot that all the way down to the e-clip and again you're going to lock that in place with another one these down you want to be careful that you don't catch the teeth there we go because if you damage the teeth you may have problems with binding or missing gears and chewing up the teeth even more to the point where your truck won't run and you'll need a rebuild on your gearbox so certain parts where you're clipping these e-clips down just go easy we've got the uh, fiddly e-clips in place and your little gear hub just set that inside your gear and on there we're going to lock that with another e-clip 
friends that's another gear shaft done oh so part 22 and we're on the second gear shaft now in section 22 now we're going to require some glue I've got some Loctite glue because a couple of the bearings are required to be glued into this piece here at either side so I'll do all my bits and bobs for this section washers, e-clips, J parts, gear parts gear rod and now we're good to go now there's two different size bearings we're working with remember I replaced all my bearings there's like a slightly smaller one and a larger one here we will be working with the slightly larger one I'm just going to want a smidge of glue around the bearings Second bearing, same again. Just a little dab of glue right round. And we're going to slot that into the back of it. So that all E clip. this gear again with the larger bearings but this this time these don't require glue remember always checking the manual to make sure everything's going the right way because to be honest scrambling my head and I've built quite a few of these in my time and it's getting confusing <laughs> oh dear so yeah uh, as you can see oh, again we're going to lock that in with another e-clip very 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 carefully here because we've got e-clip on the teeth Big washer, put that up to the e clip, and then you want the gear hub again. Make sure you got the gear hub the right way around, it's like the little lip to the outside. There's a hex, I'll just slip over there. And you got another gear spur. Now this time with the smaller bearings, again no glue, just pop them in there and then that will just sit up against like so and then we want the little plastic washer thing sit that on the end secure that in place with another e-clip two bearings, the smaller bearings and the final gear spur e-clip now your second shift fork should be looking somewhere along the lines like this and now we've got the difficult bit out of the way let's put it together I'm aware I haven't greased anything yet but guys do follow on and grease I'll be re-greasing mine later I won't be running it just yet I'll be pulling it apart to replace the mortar 
which um, I'll pick another Carson Poison, pull a mortar up, some amicable for the truck, and I'll get one of them next time at the club in Leyland. So I'll grease all my gearbox up when I uh, basically replace the motor. So you want to take your motor housing and your shift fork and you'll notice on the inside there's like a little brass insert there. So all the lips you want to like the forks want to be sat in those. Slot that in there. There we go. We're in. Again, another bearing in inside this little plastic. And then this can just sit into there. So once the other shift rod's in place, you should now have something that looks like so. So now for easy bit, and that's basically just putting it all back together now. The other spring, you get to put that on the other side of the shift fork, and again, when this goes on, shift fork through the little brass hole here. Might be an idea if um, we put the other rod on. Where's that disappeared to? Here we go, it's gone rolling off. Put the fourth rod in. So again with these, your plastic washers, as we've done on the first one. I did it a bit backward really. So bearings in. Brass knuckle. Brass joint to the uh, shift fork. And then you want your actual gear rods. They're going to go into the bearings. And you can just proceed to screw that up. Dink, 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 and dink. As you can see, it's like working through the different gears. So that guys is basically the main portion of your gearbox built up. The next episode I'll come back and we'll do the fitting the motor and getting the, um, the gearbox casing on and getting it fitted inside the chassis. So again, I do apologise for this one if it doesn't really make sense. It's kind of an awkward one to <laughs> explain unless you're actually really here looking at them, which you will be doing there at your end. So, I hope I've done it best I can. So thanks for watching. Again, I do apologise for the length of time it's took since the last episode of this build to get into this build. Um, we'll be just straight on with it now. Um, I want my old projects out of the way, ready for the new year, ready all for a new start, new YouTube, new me, new RC truck in UK. Thank you for watching and uh, thanks for being patient and all that. And I'll catch you in the next video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Leave me a comment down below. I do try my best to get back to uh, most of you. I try and get back to everybody if possible, but sometimes it's just not possible. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it if you didn't like it give me a dislike um, I don't mind honesty <laughs> have fun with your build enjoy it all and um, I'll catch you in the next video take care guys